turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I want to begin reading with verse 8. Read through verse 16. I encourage you to follow in your Bibles or the Bibles on the pews because there are several particular statements that I want us to consider in the passage of Scripture from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 8. The Word of God here is talking about Abraham primarily, but also about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Word of God is telling us about them being on a journey, about them living in tents. <clears throat> Several statements that are made about those three people especially. Reading now from Hebrews chapter 11 beginning with verse 8. The word of God says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Thinking about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all these that were journeying, they were looking for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now I know that primarily that's referring to the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And you and I as the people of God, we have the privilege to enter into that city and to, and to be able to have fellowship with God in the kingdom of heaven as we live each day. But there's also a sense in which as you think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and as you think about us today, that even though we do have that city whose builder and maker is God, that we're still looking for a heavenly country. We're looking for something that's even better than anything that we have on this earth. We have a lot of great blessings here. And we need to thank God for every one of those blessings. We need to thank God for the church. We need to thank God for the Bible, the Word of God. We need to thank God for the privilege that we have to be able to commune with God. We're glad that we have a mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We're glad to know that we're saved by grace and nothing can separate us from the love of God. We're glad to know that we are preserved in Christ Jesus our Lord. But we need to also confess like Abraham that we are strangers and pilgrims in the earth. I want you to think about that of us being first a stranger. I jotted down a couple of definitions, three definitions for today. First of all, a stranger is somebody that's out of place. But we are strangers while we live here on this earth. We are strangers to the world and to the things of the world. And we cannot have fellowship with those that walk in 
gross ungodliness to the teachings and commandments of God. Those that are haters of God, we're strangers to them and we don't have fellowship with those that despise God, and despise the Word of God, and despise the church of God. We're strangers to them and they are strangers to us. <clears throat> we're not at home. We're not really completely at home in this world. We are strangers in this world. There's another home that we have. We have a building of God, a home eternal in the heavens, not made with hands, where there will be no more sorrow, sickness, no more pain, and no more death. And so we are strangers and pilgrims. Now, the second definition I want to give you, and I encourage you, don't use modern day uh, dictionaries. I, the one that I use is from 1964 when I was in high school, World Book, uh, World Book Encyclopedia and Dictionary. But the older the dictionary, the, the more likely you are to get the meaning that's in the Word of God. In fact, the World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary that I use often in, in giving definitions of words uses scriptures that have those words. So that dictionary, uh, and, and Webster was a great Christian man, but that Webster's dictionary has biblical definitions and scriptures in the dictionary that help explain what the words mean. And when it talks about being a pilgrim, we're strangers and pilgrims. Some of you young people, I want you to think about what do you think about when you think about the pilgrims? Probably you think about those that came over in the Mayflower and they settled here in America. They were pilgrims. They were a pilgrim by definition is someone that is on a journey with a destination in mind. You hear that definition? It's somebody that's on a journey with a destination in mind. Everybody here, as you leave the house of God, you're a pilgrim going back home. But there are much bigger ways that we are pilgrims than that. In that in this world, as long as we live in this world, we're still looking for a home that's better than any home we have here in this world. The church home is a great blessing. Our, our family homes are a great blessing. But there's a heavenly home and we're looking forward to one day being with God in that home eternal in the heavens. And so we are strangers and pilgrims. And the last definition that was given in the encyclopedia dictionary was a person journeying to a sacred or holy place is on a pilgrimage. A person journeying to a sacred or a holy place is on a pilgrimage. And so we're on a pilgrimage. We need to acknowledge, we need to understand this world is not our home. We live here, but this is not our home. Just like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the scripture says that they sojourned in the land of promise and they dwelt in tents. Likewise, we have our tents, we have our homes, but I want us to all know that we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. We're looking and journeying to a greater country than anything that we will ever know here in this world. I'm glad to tell you there's something better than anything in this world. This world is full of trouble. The Word of God says that man that is born of woman is a few days and what? Full of trouble. We're going to have trouble in this world. Jesus tells us as long as we live in this world, we're going to have tribulation. But I'm telling you there's a place we will never again have tribulation. No more sorrow, sickness, no more pain, and no more death. And that's what we're looking forward to is that home that's in, eternal in the heavens. Now... I hope that you're a pilgrim. I hope that you're on a journey. But the Word of God also speaks about something other than pilgrims. And they're called wanderers. 
Back up in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 14. And I want us to contrast a pilgrim with a wanderer. I'm afraid that too many of God's children today, instead of being pilgrims, and instead of recognizing this world is not my home, and I'm on a journey to a greater destination than anything in this world, I'm afraid that many of God's people are not on a journey and they don't have a destination and they're just wandering about while they live here in this world. The Word of God speaks about a man that had 70 nephews and this is the, this is the only thing the Bible says about those 70 nephews. Those 70 nephews rode around on their asses is what the word of God says. Seventy men and the way God summarizes their life is they rode around on donkeys. That's all the Bible says about them. And that's about all you can say about a lot of people today is they're just riding around. Remember when I was in high school we had a route that we rode from downtown Decatur and then we would ride out and then we would ride back and we would ride back out. You understand what I'm talking about? Routes like that. I know we used to have it real bad here in Waycross. And they would have a lot of congestion with so many teenagers. And what were they doing? They were just making a circle going from one place to another. But there was no destination. They were just riding around. How many of God's children today are just wanderers? How many of God's children today have no intent and purpose? How many of God's children have no destination in mind? If your destination is not in your mind, if you don't have goals and objectives in your life every day, if you're not every day going after something and have a destination every day, then you are a wanderer. And we need to see the difference in a wanderer and a pilgrim. Go with me now to Numbers chapter 14. Listen, beginning in verse 29. You remember God told the children of Israel He delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. And after God delivered them out of Egyptian bondage, He began to lead them and He led them up to the Red Sea. And He told them to go after he led them through the Red Sea and they read, came to the Jordan River and they were about to go into the promised land, they were afraid to go into the promised land. And because they were afraid, that was their destination. That was They were supposed to be pilgrims on the way to the promised land. But they got right up to the borders of Canaan land and they got afraid and they turned back and they did not follow God. They did not fear God. They did not obey God. And what happened to them? What did they end up doing the rest of their lives? Wandering. wandering. What's the difference in a wanderer and a pilgrim? A pilgrim has a destination and an objective in his heart and in his mind every day. I'll tell you, brethren, you and I ought to, ought to have a great destination in our minds. We ought to be wanting to please God every day. We want to serve God. I want to walk with God every day. One of the songwriters says, And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. Well, I'll tell you, brethren, if, no, if we're nothing more than wanderers, then Jesus does not walk with us. We have to be on a journey following God, following God's word, entering the kingdom of heaven, and even looking beyond that to one day going to our heavenly home. Numbers chapter 14 beginning in verse 29. The word of God says your carcasses, this is God speaking to the children of Israel after they would not enter into the land of Canaan. And God said this to them in Numbers chapter 14 verse 29. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from twenty years old and upward which have murmured against me doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Only two 
Only two of those that were 20 years of age and older at the time the law was given. Caleb and Joshua were the only two that were going to enter into that promised land. Verse 31 says, But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, that is, if they had gone on into the land of Canaan, they said they would be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Now listen to verse 33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. So what did they do? What did the children of Israel do after they did not obey God and follow God and go into that destination that God had given them and they did not go into the land of Canaan. They did not go into the promised land when they did not obey God and trust God and fear God and enter into the land of Canaan. They did not enter into their destination. The word of God says they wandered. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Have you ever been a wanderer instead of a pilgrim? Many of the songwriters write about us being wanderers, about us as children of God, that instead of being pilgrims, we are wanderers. Instead of recognizing and truly being strangers and pilgrims in the earth, one, one songwriter says, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to to leave a God I love. Did you know we are prone to wander? We are prone to get off course. Though we may start out walking on the straight and narrow path. And we may have a destination in mind. The devil is continuously putting obstacles in our path. To lead us astray. And to get us in the broad way. Instead of the narrow way. And when we go the broad way. We will perish. I'm not talking about dying and going to hell. I'm talking about children of God. Losing the joy of their salvation. I'm talking about children of God. Wandering away from God. Another songwriter put it this way. He said I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm what? Now I'm coming home. I'll tell you that prodigal son had wandered far away from his father's house and far away from the blessings of the father's house. But when he came to the realization, when he came to himself, and he said, I, have, I am not worthy. That's one of the most important things he said. I'm not worthy to be called thy son. Just let me be one of your hired servants. He was no longer from that time that he came to himself he was no longer wandering, but now he's a pilgrim and his destination was to get back to his father's house and to the kindred and the blessings there in his father's house. So he was on a pilgrimage when he began to go back to his father's house. The Word of God speaks a lot more about wanderers than it does pilgrims. Because I think that the majority of God's children are wandering instead of being a real pilgrim every day. Go with me in your Bibles to Psalm 119. Please look in your Bibles at Psalm 119. I want you to hear what the Word of God says about, about a wanderer. Uh, Psalms 119, listen to verse 10. The psalmist here is talking about how he was praying for God to keep him from wandering. I hope that after you have heard this message this morning and you clearly understand the difference in a pilgrim and a wanderer, I hope you'll pray every day, God, please, don't let me wander today. Keep me on course. Help me not to stray from that straight and narrow way. Psalm 119 and verse 10. The psalmist says, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. You know what happens when I wander from the commandments of God? I wander from God. If I wander away from the word of God, if I wander away from the commandments of God, I wander away from the church of God. I know, brethren, that all of us wander to some degree every day. There's not a perfect person on this earth. 
But you and I ought to have this as a prayer, just like this psalmist did when he says, Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Now the book of Proverbs gives two beautiful statements. Go to the next book in the Bible, the book of Proverbs. And look at Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21. Here's what happens. The next two verses that we read tell us about what happens to wanderers. And in Psalm 119 and verse 10, the psalmist said, O Lord, let me not wander. Let me not wander from thy commandments. He understood the seriousness of wandering. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. The word of God says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. If you wander away from the pathway of understanding, you're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. When you go down that path of wandering, the scripture says here, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Go just three or four pages past this to Proverbs 27, verse 8. Look at Proverbs 27, Proverbs 27 and verse 8. <clears throat> the Word of God says in Proverbs 27 and verse 8, As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. What happens to a little bird when that little baby bird wanders from its nest? How many of you have ever seen little baby birds that wandered from the nest? How many of you have ever seen them out on a limb? You've seen the nest and you've seen the limb and you've seen the little baby birds as they would get out of the nest and they would get a little ways away from the nest but then they would go back to the nest because they understood they needed that nest for safety. As a bird that wandereth from its nest, the word of God says, so is a man that wandereth from his place. I have a place that God has ordained for me to be. And that's in the paths of righteousness. And I'm to be walking in the right way. And I'm to be going forward with the right purpose. And I'm to love the truth of God. Listen, brethren, did you know God's children can wander away from the truth of God's Word? God never leads you away from truth. God's Word and God never leads you away from the truth of God and the church of God. That never happens. I may feel led away from the church, but God never leads me away from the truth and away from the church. I'm wandering from my nest when I leave the true church of Jesus Christ. And as a bird that wandereth from its nest, its destination is going to be death. It's going to be devoured. What most often, we have one at our house, never thought we would. We went 40 years, 5 years without one. But we have a cat. You know what a cat does? What does a cat do to a little bird? That cat will prowl and get down and slowly go towards that little bird. And then it'll pounce on that bird. And it'll play with the bird a while. And then it'll fi finally eat the bird. As a bird that wandereth from its nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. There is a big cat that Peter says is a roaring lion. Did you know a lion is in the cat family? And that lion is going to and fro in the earth seeking whom he may what? Devour. devour. The devil is seeking to devour you. And the only way the devil can devour you is when you stop being on that pilgrimage. When you get off that straight and narrow path and you start wandering. As a bird that wandereth from its nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Where will I end up? I will end up devoured by Satan if I wander from the place that I'm supposed to be. Amen. I pray that God will help us not to be wanderers, 
but to be pilgrims. Go with me to one other scripture in Jeremiah chapter 14 about wanderers. Then we're going to go back to a pilgrim. Uh, please look at Jeremiah chapter 14 verses 10, 11, and 12. And here again the word of God is talking about the children of Israel wandering and the consequence of their wandering. There are serious consequences to wandering. You know what the devil tells me whenever he begins to tempt me, begins to tempt me to wander? You know what he tells me? We're not going far. We're not going far. It's not like you're going to go out and commit adultery. You're not going to go get drunk. You're just going a little ways away from God. We're not going far away. We're not really abandoning the church. We're not really abandoning the nest. We're not really abandoning the truth. I'll tell you, brethren, every time you get one step away from God and you get off that pilgrimage and you get away from truth, you have wandered from your nest. And there are serious consequences. That's explained here in Jeremiah chapter 14, beginning in verse 10. The word of God says, Thus saith the Lord unto this people, that's the children of Israel, thus have they loved to wander. What do you love to do? What do you love to do? Just think of something you love to do. Did you know, did you know that in every one of us there's a desire to wander away from God? This idea that once you're born of the Spirit of God, that you're just going to just love God and love to stay in the truth and love to walk the straight and narrow, that's just not true. You still have, if you're a born again child of God, you have two natures in you. You have the natural man or the carnal man, and you have the spiritual man. You have the flesh, here's the way the Word of God describes it. You have the flesh, and you have the spirit. And the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. There are times that I want to do good, but there are times that I want to do bad. There are times that I love God, and there are times that I love the world. And those that love the world are not loving God. They love to, what's the word we're looking at right now? If you love the world, you love to wander. And so God says this about his people. He says, they love to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Do you have to keep your feet from going somewhere? Do you have to keep your eyes from looking at things you ought not to look at? Sometimes, well, when I was a younger man, they used to say, it doesn't hurt to look. It does hurt to look. Your eyes can destroy your life. What happened to David? As great a man as David was, what did he start out where, what was the decline? Where did he begin to wander after he didn't go to battle? He looked out and he what? He saw Bathsheba. And when he saw Bathsheba, he then began to add one sin to another. He wandered with his eyes and it led to him wandering in committing adultery. And then it led to him committing murder. What did it all start doing? Started out by looking where he shouldn't look. Our eyes are prone to wander. You have to, you have to put blinders on your eyes. So they love to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. Verse 11 says, Then said the Lord unto me, that is to Jeremiah, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry, and when they offer burnt offerings and an oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Why was God going to consume them? He said in verse 10, they loved to wander. Now, my prayer for you and for me is found in 1 Peter. We'll close in 1 Peter chapter 2, I don't want you to be a wanderer. Brethren, when you're wandering, that's one of the reasons God's given us brothers and sisters in Christ is when one begins to wander or err, that you go to them. 
when they keep wandering and wandering and they're gone, it's too late to go to them. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11, Peter says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. You know what I believe most all of you are? You know what I believe you are? I believe you are strangers and pilgrims. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. What happens if you don't stay away from fleshly lusts? You're going to what? Wander. Thank you. So Peter, in closing, he says, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Brethren, I pray that God will help all of us today Amen. to have a fixed eye, to fix our eyes on Jesus and to look to Jesus every day and to walk in a way that would honor and glorify God with our lives. May God help us not to be a wanderer, but may God help us to be a pilgrim with a specific destination on our heart and in our mind and in our eyes to have a specific destination every single day of our lives is my prayer for Christ's sake.